I think it's still trying. It might be that I don't have enough memory for it. Let me go lower. Might be that I don't know how it's working. Okay, that feels clearly too big to deal with. Let me try another. Major division here. Yes. So now we're talking about geography. It's too many to display because I set it to be 100, I think. OK, there they all are. So there are 312 different choices for major region. Does that seem reasonable? There are way too many? Yeah. But you have data from more than just Ghana. Yeah. So maybe we should filter on the country as well, just to make things a little simpler. So that should be in co-name, facet, text facet. I have 203 different countries. Is that really the country field? CO name? Alaska, the last time I looked, was not a country. Arizona was not a country. So we have a mix of, of administrative levels in the country name field. And that's why there are 203 different ones here. But at least that's where we'll find the information for Ghana. So let's go find it. Probably is, since when we get down to Ghana, we actually have three different versions, or maybe four, GHN as well. Let me scroll down a little bit further. GHN. Okay, interesting. There are multiple values. So, I would ask Alex then, is the intention of the co-name field to capture the label information? If it is, I don't want to touch it. That's a verbatim original and is sacred from here until somebody reads the label again and says, that's not what the label says and changes the data. So what I should do in that case is I should create a different field. If I want to create standard values for the country, I should create a different field for this and change that field. I can do that. Let me close down my facets and edit columns. Now we're into a new part of the menus and there are several interesting options. One is to split a single column into se several different columns. So I would use that if I had a list of things and I wanted them to be separated or if I had names and I wanted the first name to be separated from the last name. I can use split into several columns to do that. That's not what we want to do at the moment. What we really want to do at the moment is to duplicate this column, which is add column based on this column. So let me click on that option. So I'm allowed to give it a new column name and I'll say country I'll say standard countries so I know that I've done something to it. If some kind of error occurs I will just 
throw it away. That's what set to blank means. The expression should be the coname field. Having put coname in there, below I'm giving what the value of my new field will be based on my expression. What I put in here will end up putting null for every value in that field. So my formula is not right. The clue was, when I had nothing here, it said value. And that was to take the value of my input field and to make it the value of my output field. So I was wrong to put coname in there. What I wanted to do was just leave it what it was because Refine's smarter than I am and knew that I wanted to copy the contents of the field. The point that I want to make here is when you do the copy, you can use a formula to change the value for the new field. And the formulas that you can create use a language called Google Refine Expression Language. So for those of you familiar with Excel or with Access, you're able to create expressions for a field. For example, you can sum all the values in a column or you can take some part of the text field. When Town showed you his example, when he was taking the verbatim latitudes and longitudes, and dividing them into the degrees and the minutes, he used a formula. It's the same idea here. This is where you would build the formulas. And the formulas use this language, the Google Refine Expression Language. And the language itself is documented in the help for Refine. I'm not going to use it right now. I'm just going to make a copy of the column right now. So now I have a standard country field right here next to the coname field. I can leave the verbatim original as it was and as I should, and now I can act on my copy, the standard country field. So let me do so. I want to text facet on my standard country field, and yes, it has all those same choices, including the potentially three different versions of Ghana. So now my goal, sorry, four different versions of Ghana. My goal is to make all versions of Ghana look the same. I can do that in a number of ways. The way we know already is to edit and change this one to this one and apply it. Now that possibility disappeared from this list, and this number increased by the number that I changed from before. That's the easy way. I want to try an experiment. I don't know if it will work, but let's try it. The experiment is to do clustering. Clustering is a way for refine to try to guess which of all of these things really should be the same as each other. Now, my hope is that it will look at this and say, all three of these versions of Ghana mean Ghana. I don't know if it will, but I want, that's what I hope. And that's what cluster is meant to do for me. Whoa, it does all kinds of things. Here are all the clusters that it finds. Remember, I'm not looking only at Ghana at my text filter. I haven't chosen only Ghana. I have all of the possibilities. So it looks and it finds all of these different possibilities that it thinks are northern Rhodesia. And I'm in agreement with that. I'm excited. Look at all these data that I can clean. The distinctions are very simple. This one has a period and this one doesn't, for example, in British Cameroon. So I can do some very quick cleaning by saying everything that says Northern Rhodesia should just be Northern Rhodesia. All those versions should say this. 
And I can do that for Fernando Po and USA and Cote d'Ivoire and so on. And when I apply that, I can apply it in two ways. One is I can merge all of those that I checked and let them be the single values that they are and then try to cluster again to see if those clustered values start to match with other things. Or I can just merge them and say I'm done for now. I'll merge and recluster. So apparently those clusters went away and I only have a few left. But this is the full list of clusters that it found. And unfortunately, Ghana was not among them. So I need to do Ghana the semi-hard way. I need to change them to Ghana. But you can see that there were a bunch of them that I can have cleaned up very quickly. Town has can a question. Can you change the way you cluster? Yes. Is that keying function? There are actually two ways. Okay. Maybe change one. Let's try. Might find it. Let's see if it does something different. I can't describe to you the distinction between these clustering methods. I don't know the details of them. But let's try it. Answer is quite different. We have all these Rhodesias again now. But we still don't have Ghana. And this particular one came up with a false clustering. It put South and North Rhodesia together. At least for Rhodesia, it didn't work. But for British Cameroon, it did. Let's clean up British Cameroon because I can see Moses fidgeting in his seat. Oh, I've got to clean that, got to clean that. Okay, we should do the same for Cameroon. So we're click, oh, and I see Nigeria. I just can't stop, you know? When it comes to cleaning data and making it so easy, I can't stop. But you get the idea of what the, the clustering does. Let's try to go back and try some of the other keying functions. Again, I don't know what any of these does, but we get different answers. And the different answers are useful. All these really are clusters. And look, Ghana's down there. Now, did it do it right? Well, it put two of them together. Right? It didn't keep the one that was just Ghana, but it kept those two. So I've determined that I want those really to be Ghana. I'll change the value that it wants it to be. And then I'll merge and recluster again. So now, Ghana disappears from my list. Ghana's all clean now. If I look over here, let me, let me close this all together now and go back to here. This is my summary of values in the standard country field and I only have one version of Ghana applied to 46,521 rows, which I would like to use and look at only the ones from Ghana now. So we've done some cleaning. We need to move on to something else. And I look at this, ver this view of the data and I say, there's so many fields there, I, it's confusing me. I can't deal with it all. And I've already fixed co-name to standard name. So let me do one of two things. Let me either collapse that column, which looks like this. So I made it small, so I don't have to see it. But it keeps its place. Or an alternative, that 
opens it back up again. The alternative is to move the column somewhere. I could remove it altogether, but I want to keep the verbatim data. So I'm not going to remove this column. I'm not going to rename it. Instead, I'm going to choose to move it somewhere. I have the options to move it to the left, to the right, all the way to the beginning, or all the way to the end. So the way that I work, I just want to get it out of my view, and I'll put it all the way to the end. And I'll do the same with standard country, because I think I'm done with those. And now I can concentrate on what's interesting to me, which is the next geographic level. So now I can add a text facet for the next geographic level. And now, apparently, I have 44 different regions or something that are like regions in Ghana. Remember, I'm only looking at Ghana and I have 44 regions. Now I can repeat the process at that geographic level and clean it up to be only the regions, only the correct regions in Ghana. And I can reassign them if they're, if they're antiquated. Anything that I need to do, I can clean it up here. So I think by now you get the idea of the process. You get the idea that once you start, you might not stop. You get the idea of how much is hidden in good data that actually has the possibility to be cleaned. And that's probably plenty to eat lunch on. And we'll come back, and what I'll do is we'll pick a data set, maybe this one, maybe another one. It might be easier to pick another one. And I'll do some of these things, and I want you to do the same. Make sure you can do the same thing. Because later on, we'll have exercises in which I'll have you look at your data for your country from GBIF, the ones that are already in the folders, and try to do the explorations of those data. Get an idea of what the data on GBIF for your country look like, what problems there might be, which institutions have those problems, and so on. And then Town suggested that another or additional possibility is to look at the data that you captured in, um, in your exercises for data capture and to look at those and look at how clean the data were that you entered. Now, I was watching the folks doing birds and I was seeing data entry errors go in and I was thinking, don't tell them this is great for later. So hopefully, if you, if you folks who are doing the birds look at that data set, it'll be very informative. Okay. One final thing before we go that I didn't mention and realize now. Sure, Refine is a good tool. Sure, we've had some <coughs> troubles getting it to run in certain cases that I'll still try to figure out. The nice thing is, nice things are, it's free. Another one is it will run on all different kinds of operating systems, Macintosh, Linux, and PCs. So if you create a formula to work with a data set, this one of these recipes, you can share that recipe with somebody else even if they're using a Macintosh. And there won't be a problem. You can actually do the same thing on all those platforms. Welcome back. We have power, we can continue. One thing that I didn't mention that came to a surprise, as a surprise to many after they kept working with no power, Refine kept working with no power. And the reason is that Refine does not require a connection to the internet. It doesn't run from a website, it runs on your own machine. There are some aspects of Refine that can use resources on the web, and they're spectacular, that what it allows you to do. It allows you to connect to databases that are out there and free. It will also allow you to connect to web services. And there are two particular web services of interest to our group. One is a GBIF name resolution service in which you can provide scientific names or genus species 
combinations of Darwin core fields to the web service and it will look in its names registry to find the current valid name that matches and return that to you. Refine can talk to that service and get the name back and put it in your Refine workspace. The second, which is easily as interesting, is that Geolocate has a web service. So that if you provide the country, state, county, locality fields, or whatever you call them, and make the correct call to Geolocate, it will take all of that text and try to return to you a full georeference for it. And that goes into your spreadsheet directly. I call it a spreadsheet, your workspace. So both of those are extremely useful. Both of those do require that you be connected to the internet when you do it, but only while you do it. So that should be good news. You don't need an internet connection to do data cleaning. You do need power after your battery dies, however. So those of you who are addicted and can't stop data cleaning, do so <coughs> carefully with respect to how the power is functioning. 